All right, welcome everyone. So in today's tutorial, I want to show you how you can easily make knots in Maya. So in my scene right now, I have an image of a knot and I put it on its own layer and set it as a reference layer so that I don't accidentally um, select it. So that's this last box right here. And then um, what you'll need to do is grab an image off the internet of a knot you want to create. Um, the knot I chose is a little bit looser just because it's perfect for this demonstration. However, you can um, do a tighter knot if you like, right? And um, the process that we're going to use is to use a curve tool to basically draw out our knot and then we'll extrude along it. Um, there's a couple of things, but uh, that's the gist of it. All right, so let's start. Uh, first, let's go into our orthographic view. So I loaded the image in the front view, so I'll go into there. And then I'm just going to zoom in a little bit, turn off the grid, and um, we'll grab one of the curve tools. So to get to your curve tools, it's under Create, Curve Tools, and you have a selection over here. Um, you can use the CV or EP curve tool. It's pretty normal, right? I'm going to do a little bit different, though. I'm going to use the Pencil Curve tool because it works with something else I'm about to do. All right, so I'm going to choose this one. And then uh, this is a freehand curve tool. So all you need to do is click and drag the direction of that curve, just following that path. And um, you can use your mouse to do it. Um, I'm going to use a stylus, but I've used a mouse before. It's fine. I'm just going to use a stylus for this demonstration. All right. So I'm going to start on this end. And I'm basically just tracing the length of this rope, which will become a knot. Um, the curve that it's drawing is red, so it's a little bit hard to see, but once it's done, it'll be um, a blue color. And if the curve isn't exactly the way you want, you can start over or you can just um, leave it because we can move the points a little bit after. All right, so I'm done. So that's the nice thing about the pencil curve tool. It's very quick. Um, and then when you're done, press enter on the keyboard or Q to go to your select tool. Um, that'll complete it as well. All right, just going to turn off the image for a second, the visibility. And if we take a look, it's not bad. However, you'll notice that it's a little bit wobbly. And that's because as we're drawing, you know, um, we're not steady enough to get that smooth stroke, right? Um, there's another issue. So if I hold down the right mouse button, and it's actually kind of um, connected to the first issue as well. So if I go into Control Vertex, these CVs, um, there's a lot of them. So um, that will make it difficult to basically change our curvature because we have so many points that we need to work with. So what I would like to do is smoothen out that curve and reduce these points. And luckily for us, um, there's a feature within the curves. It's the rebuild feature and that'll fix both of them at once. So let's do that. We'll go into object mode and I'm going to select the curve and then I'm going to go up to curves and down here is our rebuild function. Um, what I'm going to do is open up that option box though. And then I'm just going to reset this. And what we want to do is we want to change the number of spans. So a span is the distance between two um, edit points, right? And I want to pick a number that maintains this curvature. So it retains that, um, but it doesn't give me too many points that um, it becomes difficult to work with. So for this, I chose a number I chose 36, a number. I did choose a number. Um, so I went with 36 earlier and it worked out. For your curve, it might be a little bit different, right? And you'll need to play with that number. So I'm gonna click uh, Rebuild just to close this window and um, take a look at um, the curve because you'll notice it'll smooth out. And just like that, we have that curve. Um, now it's much smoother. And if we go into the control vertices, um, there's a lot less points that we need to work with. So that's awesome. Let's bring back the image. And if you feel like um, this doesn't quite follow um, um, your image um, close enough, you can always go in here and move some of these, but um, we'll be adjusting this curve later anyhow, right? So you don't really need to go overboard, but if you want to move it, uh, some of the points around, you can. All right. So now what I'm going to do next is go into the perspective view. And let's go into object mode. And um, now we'll move some of the sections on this curve. So you can see from the reference, um, some of these sections um, go back a little bit, some go forward, and some even go through the other sections. So we'll need to adjust those. Um, and to make it a little bit easier to work, let's give our curve some volume. So we'll extrude some geometry um, along it. Now, 
Um, I'm in Maya 2023, which gives me the sweet mesh feature, which is this one right here. Um, but if you're in a previous version of Maya, um, you won't have that. And I did make a tutorial a while back on how to extrude along a curve, and I'll post a link below to that video. But for me, I'll be using this feature. So I'm gonna select my curve, I'm gonna go up, and I'm just gonna open up the outliner because sometimes when I click this, it makes uh, two sweet meshes for me. So I'll click this once, and there we go, perfect. All right, I'll turn on wireframe on shaded, and now I'll adjust some of these properties. So the first one I wanna adjust is the scale profile, Right, I'm gonna lower this. I'm gonna go with like um, 0.2 for the number. Right, gonna match it close but not exact. And then for the precision, I wanna increase this. Also, before I forget, I'm gonna give it a cap. There we go. And I'll increase this until I feel like I have um, enough topology to work with. And I think that should be fine for me. So I went with like a 91.5. Um, I can close this up for now. And now what we want to do is we want to uh, basically adjust our curve. So we don't want to play with um, the mesh. Let me open this back up for a second, right? We don't want to mess around with this. We want to adjust the curve. So I'm going to open up the channel box. I'm going to select this mesh. I'm going to put it on its own layer. So that's this last icon right here. That will add it to a new layer. Then I'll double click the layer and I'll call this the knot layer. and click save. All right, and then I'll click this last box, which will make it a reference layer once we get that R. And now if I turn on x-ray mode and I need to select the curve, I don't have to worry about selecting that mesh. All right, um, can I close this now? Yeah, I'll close it for now. And over here, I'll close this as well. All right, so now uh, what we wanna do is move some of these points so that it moves that curve and the mesh. So if I go into control vertex, grab a point, you can see that it moves that mesh. It's just gonna undo that. So what we wanna do is maybe start with a section. So I'm gonna start with this section right here, which is this curve, um, sorry, this CV. So I can move it and let's just take a look. So for this one, it's totally fine, right? Um, I'm just gonna move this over here a little bit. There we go. And what I'm gonna do is actually undo that, right? I'm gonna move it with, um, a bit of fall off. So we're going to use the soft selection. Um, before, uh, sorry, first, to toggle on soft selection, that's B on the keyboard, but I'm going to open the this up. So I'm going to double click the move tool. That'll give me my tool settings. And down here is soft selection. So when I press B, you can see this toggles on. Just going to reset that. All right. So to increase or decrease the fall off, hold down B on the keyboard, then left click with the mouse and drag, and you can increase or decrease that. And when you let go, you can see this number update. So what I'm gonna do is just decrease that fall off, but you'll notice an issue. If I move this right now, it's moving this section. I'm just gonna undo that. So I only want the fall off to affect the point and the, um, the section of the curve that it's attached to. So just this section here. So to uh, remedy that, what we can do is for the fall off mode, we'll change it to surface. And now when I move this, right, it's not affecting that, but it's gonna affect here or just as much influence or fall off as I give it. So for here, I'm just gonna move this to about right here for now. Right, perfect. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll exit x-ray mode just so that I can see this a bit better, but that was fine. And I can close this for now as well. So I usually use the hotkeys to adjust the fall off. And then now what we wanna do is take a look at this. So we have a section that comes up around the front, right, a little bit. And what I wanna do is pick a point here. But if you take a look right now, it's a little bit hard to see which point I need to grab, right? I can grab one and move it. A uh, trick though, is to take a look at the hull. So I hold down the right mouse button and go to hull. The hull is basically um, these lines that are drawn between the CVs. So we can see the flow of the CVs. So over here, I can see, oh, I need to grab maybe this CV, CV over here or this one up here. So let's take a look. Maybe I'll grab the one right here. So that'll be this one. So I'll go into control vertex, grab this one, and then, you know, just play with my fall off what I want. And I want to pull it forward just a little bit. So for this one, I will exit x-ray mode. And I will just undo that. 
increase the fall off just a bit more. And there we go. I'll bring this to about right here. All right. And maybe down a little bit as well. Okay. So now what I'm trying to do is create an even um, spacing between the loops. And you'll see why later, um, but it'll help us out. All right. So now let's grab this section and move it back. So I need to grab a CV somewhere in there. And that'll probably be that one, but just to double check. Yep. It'll be that one. And for this one, I don't want too much fall off, just a little bit to bring that back a little bit. And we'll just push this back right to about there. All right, so what else do we need to do? We need to bring this one forward in front of uh, this loop. And uh, we need to bring the other one back a little bit more, I think. So that would be this one. Okay, so let's start with this one here. Um, I will grab um, in this one I might want to grab both of these CVs so I'll grab this one and this one reduce the fall off a little bit and then bring this back just a bit there we go and then the last one I need to bring forward is this one here everyone else is Everywhere else is good. This one I could move a little bit more actually. So before I start, I'll go into this one. And maybe I'll grab this one. Or this one. Just a little bit more. All right. And then I'll grab this one and move it forward. So over here, need to find out which one that is. So that will be this one right here. And I'll move this one forward. And there we go. Looks pretty good. And there is our knot. Now, this knot is not quite tight, right? Um, but I'll show you a trick, right? As long as we have good spacing. Uh, there could be a bit better spacing there, but it's fine. Um, so what I'm going to do before I do anything else is I want to make a copy of this. So I'm going to uh, duplicate that mesh. Just for presentation purposes, I might use it for later. So I'm going to... Duplicate that, duplicate that, and I'll duplicate this curve as well. So I'm going to hide both of these. So these two, just pressing H on the keyboard and hiding those two. And then what I want to do over here is um, I'm going to turn on X-ray mode for a second. I'm going to select the curve and go into the control vertices. And I'm going to do a box select of pretty much everything here. So now what I'm going to do is maybe, let's see. I'm going to go with maybe about this much fall off. Yeah, that should be fine. And now let's scale this and see if we can tighten this knot just a little bit. So a little bit, um, it's a little trick I came up with earlier and it worked out pretty well. So hopefully this works. Sometimes it, um, it really depends on how much space you have between those, um, those loops. So we'll just scale this in and there we go. There's our knot, right? So, um, with something like this, once it has a bit of a texture, you don't really have to worry about those intersecting so much, intersecting too much, just because um, with knots such as this, um, usually it has a little bit of a give, so um, they will push into each other, so it should be fine. Um, yeah, so just like that, we have a tighter knot. And what one more thing I like to do is I will take the curve, right? And I'll hit it with one more rebuild just so to even that topology a little bit and um, make it a little bit smoother. So, um, and you can adjust the spans if you want to do that as well, right? You can always go back. You can also, if you're using the sweep mesh, um, you can go into here and um, go to the sweep, sweep mesh creator. Oh, I forgot to optimize this one actually. So I hit optimize. There we go. That'll just give me the topology and the areas I need it, right? But um, one thing I would like to do is said I'd like to rebuild it. So I'll go up here, curves, and let's see if I can see this. So curves, and I hit it with a rebuild. There we go. And now that looks a lot better. Um, at least a little bit better. <laughs> right, so there we go. We have um, now um, a knot, just like that. We have our original I can play with a little bit more later if I want. But yeah, hopefully you can use this for your own projects. Um, the pencil curve tool, the knots, right? 
um, it really gives it a bit of flexibility for uh, some other things. Say you're making like a cup or a vase, you can just draw it out quickly and then rebuild that curve. So hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, that's it for this one. We will see you in the next. <laughs> this has been Digital Dreambox, your destination for game art.